This man is almost deaf, unless he is wearing his glasses. When he takes them off, sound diminishes to a whisper. Because in his glasses are four tiny plastic covered pieces of metal that amplify sound. They are called transistors and powered by tiny batteries no larger than a pill. The electron tube gave the world the first practical amplification of sound. Electron tubes made possible the innovation of such things as radio, television, and even talking motion pictures. In time, tubes were produced much smaller in size. However, many ideas which were theoretically feasible were not possible to develop because even the smallest tubes required a relatively large amount of power and produced considerable heat. Then, in 1948, a group of scientists in the laboratory of a telephone company in the United States was researching in a field of metals called semiconductors. They wanted to find out what greater scientific value these metals might have and ended up by winning the Nobel Prize for inventing the transistor. Here at last was a device so tiny that several would fit inside a thimble. They can do the same job as electron tubes and require only a fraction of the power tubes used to operate and remain cool while functioning. Transistors are not an improvement on electron tubes. They are entirely different in construction and work as a completely new principle. This enlarged diagram shows that a transistor is a sandwich made of three layers of a semiconducting metal called germanium. The first layer is the emitter. The middle layer is the base. And the third layer is the collector. The emitter is a reservoir of electrons. There is a barrier, like a dam, in the base. The height of this dam may be raised and lowered by a very small amount of electric current, thus regulating the flow of electrons from the emitter to the collector. The electrons that flow over the dam deliver much more power to the collector than the amount of power needed to raise and lower the dam. This laboratory model telephone shows how sound carried by electrical impulses is made louder by the transistor. Electrical impulses become so weak in traveling through miles of wire that they hardly operate the receiver. A circuit which has a transistor at the receiving end allows impulses to come out as loud as they went in. Transistors take so little power that if you soak a piece of blotting paper in acid or even wet it with saliva and wrap it around a silver coin, it will provide enough electricity to operate a transistor. Much of the work in manufacturing transistors has to be done through large magnifying glasses in air-conditioned chambers with temperature and humidity strictly controlled. But new machines have been developed to lick the production problem. This one does part of the job of aligning the three tiny layers of germanium and attaching hair-thin wires. This is an inspection machine which uses transistors to sort and inspect transistors. Within the past five years, this automatic machinery has increased the production of transistors from one million to 60 million a year, and is shortly expected to reach 300 million. Transistors have already made possible many advances in all fields of communication, benefit millions of people, ship to many parts of the world, Transistors have found their rightful place in the field of electronics. Transistors are helping to make all kinds of things available cheaper and in greater quantity.
by controlling the machinery that makes automation possible. They use so little power that they make possible simpler, more dependable, and less expensive automatic machines. Transistors are at home in the sky. If you fly in an airplane, they will serve you in miniaturized navigation instruments, in radar, which can see the weather ahead, and an automatic pilot, which keeps the plane on course without human aid. After the pilot has taken the plane aloft, he sets a compass course for his destination, turns on the automatic pilot, and relaxes. If air currents deflect the plane from its course, the automatic pilot senses the change, and the transistors turn on an electric current and amplify it to operate the plane's rudder and elevators. Transistors are soaring into outer space. The satellite contained a tape recorder and two radios equipped with transistors. This machine records a wealth of scientific data as the satellite spins through space. And when it is over a point where the information can be received, the tape recorder plays it back and the radios transmit it to scientists on Earth. If this equipment used vacuum tubes instead of tiny transistors, the satellite would have to be several times larger to carry the bigger tubes and batteries, plus an air conditioning system to keep them cool. Not all miniature tape recorders spend their time spinning through space. Here, one is being used at a seminar of students and professors from many lands at an American university.